guys. Is your checking account balance basically? Yes. Last year in January, it's more spread out this year. So. 
actual depriving just from apples to apples. Our salaries and wages were up a little bit. We were busier. Our telephone and utilities were up about two thousand dollars. The legal and auditing was up quite a bit. I mean, BKD charged us differently than they had last year. In prior years, they spread it out over several months, and this year they did more of it in one month. So, I'm not quite sure why they changed things up. And then travel was less money. We had some more meetings, and you know, having to be there. So last month's average was an ER was two a day. Three. Last month was really good. Um, this month we were kind of slow at the beginning of the month and it got towards the end. <laughs> Next month, of course, labs will be really high because we have health care. Mm -hmm. But it's doing good. And we have some lab has been up some because we have some more blood transfusions and. How's the health fair? I mean, they're not paying a whole lot for that. Do you guys get paid very well for that? Or? We 
did better when we did it in house, yeah. but now um, like we're going through Doris's. Not well, only because we don't have enough staff in house in lab. Yeah. Um, when we did that, we had three full time employees, and now we just have two and then some students. But we don't make a lot of money off of it. Is it still true that you can go to physical therapy for six visits without a physician's order? Mm -hmm. That is just blows my mind. I mean, we, the physical therapist evaluates you and they still send it to a doctor and have a doctor sign off on it. Yeah. But you don't have to go to a doctor. And that's up to six visits? I believe it's six. Six treatments, and if there's no. No progress in the progress and they'll send you to the position. Oh, okay. Which is pretty healthy. Physical therapy, I mean, it's up and down, but it's pretty well back there. Direct access in January, we had two direct access, February 1, and March was up to five. I've seen more pictures than I can remember of <laughs> these pools. Um, some of them kind of remind me of a hot tub. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, the one is what they'll be doing is standing quite simple different exercises, and then you have to lift in case you know, the person can't do it in there. So, advantage to it, I think. Um, part of the research I ask them to do is talk to some of the local doctors and see, you know, mm -hmm. if I don't want to build it and see if they'll come, you want to make sure that the local docs would use it if they have it. So, I think Rice County has one.
So it's all very slow. Um, there's a lot of heroes. Oh. Oh. DG's in charge of all that. I'm not doing it. 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 I'm not so that'll be crossed off. I didn't know about the vehicles. Ready to go ahead and get in there? I don't know. Yes, and I think this is the first one he's had with us, and I'm hoping that it's 
the last one. So, and I know that Sunflower Electric uh, has uh, contacted us and asked for a copy of our gun report because they had to turn all of their stuff in the insurance company. Uh, I think there was three structures, three and a half Two structures. Two that were burned up. Completely burned up. I don't think he's in there. Flinch at all. I don't think he's in but that being well, said, it should be. It's still even causing problems with the day that got Mr. Reno fired up, too. Yeah, yeah from the same, same area. Same, yeah. yeah. And he said it was still so. a tree swollen that started and, his fire. And it was actually a lightning strike from the week. Uh, That's what started his. But we were, I mean, it was the same pasture. We were just a little bit east of the front area. And the only thing that helped us was that was actually burned out. Back to the west, so we were in grass. Um, where's right? So, are you going to raise it? So, what are you telling want me to do? I would be in favor of raising it. Divide that in half. Mm -hmm. How much you think? I'd say a third of it. That they can get a mail out of the Here's a uh, draft of mutual aid, and we brought this to you guys last fall. And this is just a blank mutual aid agreement. This one is titled the city of Grant. And this is going to be kind of a blanket policy that we're going to use for, uh, for all our surrounding counties that we work with. Blessing on it and all that. I thought we already had this in place in the surrounding counties. We do. We, it, it's always been a word of mouth. We have not. Uh, we have not updated our mutual aid agreements in several years. And I we think, have them for EMS. That's what we. Uh, so the last one was in an eighty-eight. I think that's yeah, the last one was an eighty-eight. The last rate of fire. Down. Down. So and for the fire. What was this for? Last fall, yeah. And we had brought this one to Kirk <coughs> you guys last year. And we kind of set on it. We wanted to make sure we were, we're good. But uh, it's fine if you guys would more approach the other chiefs within the surrounding areas and get the sign by them. Submit this one to the Covera. Covera, I think, was the most updated one we had for fire, and it was four or five years old. Because when TJ was still here. So, so the Edwards, Bonnie, Martin, Price, Covera, Reno, Reno, and Brown. Just the guys that we commonly work with. So, and that's not to, to say that the fire department in the past has been clear down to Barber County. Or helping with a lot of fire in there. So that something comes up like that, it'll be just a kind of a blanket. Unless you hear you go and be safe. And That's all for that uh, national call out that we need. Uh, Wildland firefighters. Right. Yeah. So, so for the force, all the other It's called what? It was actually a part of the uh, national call out for wildland firefighters mm -hmm. that they went to schooling. Four years ago, five years. five years ago, for the, we had a bunch of firefighters here that are wildland firefighters certified, and uh, they would actually call for assistance for their large fires in Barber County, especially where they get the canyons and they had what I, I can't remember how big that one was. It started in Oklahoma and came all the way up into Kansas right. so, right. several years ago. So they would call. We they had come in from our way from Wichita, Salina. Dodge City everywhere to go down there and assist the uh, manpower and trucks to the help with the fire. Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of a mutual aid call out for all over the state. Whatever, speaking of which, whatever happened to, you know, remember two or three years ago that people from Barber County come out and we were talking about a fire district or something and, you know, the big concern was Reno County with all our cedar trees, particularly the southwest corner of the county. And they had a meeting out at the uh, soil conference. Conference soil, but what's it called? Soil conservation. 
That's one conservation. The one on the on the west side. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That. And I had. Yeah. I'm not sure. Do you remember that Nita when they mm -hmm. when they had that meeting with the fire people from they were trying to create something like they did in Barber County or their Barber County was included. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, that. yeah, it's a group of local guys to get together and just uh, pledge to help the neighbors out if they have a fire. Mm -hmm. No, and mutual aid that we're trying to do right now. Yeah. Right, if they have something. And I never heard it. They never came no. back. But I, I do, and I read in the paper they had a big fire down there, and they talked about it. all the neighbors coming out to take the fire too. And Barbara, yeah. he he wanted to help us get something established around here, but then he never I never came back. Never came back. Right. So I I don't remember, it. especially like in the Rattlesnake Creek area, oh. where if you get down in there, I mean, it's going to go. Yeah. yeah. There's no stopping. Yeah. No stopping. Yeah, we've had that. So, especially the morning now that it's got all the white trees now. Yeah. And I would think even in Cabrera area, it would be the same thing. Yeah. That we, and I mean, the good thing about Cabrera is it can get to some of the spots over there and the fire management has a slow burn. You know, it needs to be burned off anyways. You know, we'll let it burn to where we can buy it because there's some of that stuff out there you can't even get to. I've never had that problem. On that fire up there, we were running into stuff, but we were getting stuff and stuff like that. So, uh, we did purchase our truck that uh, we got over at the uh, Wichita for $7,850. Jerry Sanders and Stafford purchases for us, and we're reimbursing Jerry for it. And he had the paperwork had to be done within 48 hours. So, but it, Jerry said from everything he's seen on the pictures, it looks identical to the one that he just bought. Less than a month ago. Looks very good, very clean truck. Probably hasn't seen any uh, same time or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So, that being said, we have a couple quotes for pump and a tank. This is a quote from uh, Axe for Equipment over at Newton, which was, used to be Shaven Industries, <coughs> for a 3,100 gallon marshal? Yeah, 3,135. 3,135 gallon tank. With all the fittings and stuff we would need, it was four thousand five hundred fifty dollars and seventy one cents. And we have one from Simpson Enterprise or Simpson Farm Enterprises in Great Bend for a thirty three thousand two hundred fifty gallon tank with everything we would need. They have it stock sitting on the ground in Great Bend for four thousand one hundred ninety three dollars and fifty seven cents. One from Tyreek, what is it, Simpson Ag? It's Ever. six weeks out. Ag spray. Ag spray. Ag spray. Six weeks out. Simpson has one right in it. has four. Four of them. Four of them. Yeah. That's not with the pump, those. No, we have. Ag sprays with the pump or not? No. No, we have a pump. Oh, yeah. Well, we, we have, have to have to pump separate, so. Thank you, sir. 3,250 gallons. So the, the biggest tank we have in the county, by 200 gallons. The other 31, 35. That's what I told Mindy we needed to do the first time. He rigged up one of these trucks and said that's impossible to do. Well, with forestry trucks, it is. Uh, we yeah. own the trucks. Uh, we can okay. do what we want. Now. We, own. We, <laughs> we can do what we want. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> so our, our little ones are, yeah. are kind of out of way. Because we, so. since Steve, we've been in the buying mode instead right. of doing the forestry. Yeah, yeah. 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 we bought. Yeah, we've got. Jerry's going to be 2,500 gallons. I'm going to have to get a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a Simpsons, all right. Is that one of your favorite? Yeah, that's the one that we would, I mean, it's cheaper and it's local, so I'll just send it to the guys if you can. <clears throat> I'll make a motion. We accept this bid $41,993.40. Mm -hmm. 
Costly, but uh, talking with the uh, chief, which station was going to set up, which would be Marshall, uh, he wanted the pump with a primer in it. You know, we're talking $500 difference without a primer. But uh, this kind of eliminates problems for us. It'll take care of itself. What kind of, how much volume is that? Is this 150 gallon? So it'll be more and more. Move a lot of water. I mean, it's, that's all it's going to do. It's going to lose water. It's not going to be going to be out fighting fire. It's going to be strictly used as a tank. Uh, equipment for light bars, stuff like that. We were able to salvage some stuff that we had in the house, some from other agencies across the county, and that will be very minimal for for us. But these two items, the truck, well, actually the truck, the pump, and the tank, we're taking that. We're going to be able to rig up a truck for roughly under $20,000, which is pretty cheap. So you're taking all the time? Yes. I would know that we purchased the pump from Banco Emergency Equipment for $4,104. Second. Motion second to purchase this uh, pump from Banco Emergency Equipment for $4,104. On the thing you say, I ain't got it. Motion carried. Doug wanted me to pass along with the tower manager. We're supposed to start work today. I have our radio system, and so it's one step closer to doing what we need to do. Doug got the building moved, and everyone can put the door in, and all that. I don't have anything else. You guys have anything else? You have anything else I need to know about? Well, gentlemen, we've been here three weeks in a row, so hopefully we're good for a while. So. Yeah. But uh, we'll get these uh, emergency or the mutual aid agreements, and we'll be busy. <coughs> Did Joe, Joe look at it? Yeah, he's set up his okay. So I actually have a copy here for Joe if you want one. For him to have it. You have all the copies you need? Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I would encourage you, especially if you have a fire in Cabrera or Wild Stamp Creek area, places that are hard to get to, to try to get the probably talk to all your firefighters and just encourage them. I mean, they know who they're talking to. If they're talking to a landowner, mm -hmm. probably has some good ideas on how to get there without getting stuck and stuff. But to listen to those guys, I agree 100%. I mean, it'd be a good topic of discussion. Yeah, and we had kind of visited that night after everything. With my, at least I did with my guys over there that night. So, but yeah, it, it was a miscommunication on our part. So, so we'll get it handled. So. He's riding right on a motorcycle. <laughs> a new rag I might not listen to him, but if it's a farmer that knows where he's at, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we get in trouble for profiling. <laughs> I, I, I understand, <laughs> so, I understand <laughs> where you're at, but I'm not sure. Do you guys want us to touch? I'm basically. just curious, and it may have been just a flash in the pan, you know. Okay. Maybe they did. But I do, I do recall, it's Kurt over there. Oh, yeah. And they were concerned about the southwest corner of Reno County because of all the cedar trees. They said the fire got started. It'd be a tourist trap. You know, that might be some work. Check into our work just to, to see whatever happened to it. I'm sure that But it was, yeah, it was mainly range. And, 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 Yeah, these were their biggest concern. And, and I might be one of them that TJ remembers a little bit too. We still keep pretty good contact yeah. with TJ. There was eight or ten of us there. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
services see if they want to use it I'm sure they would I don't, I don't know I'd rather not use our lot but they could use it to store it their own I mean right. do they have to be secured though I mean I guess I don't no. know not that I'm just park that. out park out behind that's what they used to do I until mean, they pay for the tow bill yep I'll tell you what park one where huh? if the tow the, the tow service would park it it's, it's, it's up to them to where they park it on their property somewhere not on the county's yeah, I mean, that's up to you guys. I mean, I would rather use our impound lot for what we need to use it for and not just storing our vehicle. That's my feeling, I guess. There's that one outfit in Lyons where they're both the tow service and car crusher. They're always looking for, you know, vehicles to tow and crush. I don't know if you, I can't remember the name. I've never seen your moment. You know, I know exactly where they are on Highway 14, the north side of Lyons, the north side of Lyons. <laughs> <Yeah. coughs> 
So you might want to contact them to see if they're interested. I mean. Well, and it, I was going to ask you anyway. There's some vehicles that were, they've been in there for a long time. Um, if, if we can't <clears throat> get a hold of a registered owner, mm -hmm. do we have to advertise, the, I'm talking about mangled ones, burnt ones, do we have to advertise those or can we just crush them? I mean, do we have a VIN number or anything? Oh, yeah. Okay, well, we probably got to advertise. Them on this paper. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, now, didn't we have a mobile crusher come in one time? Yeah. It came to the. No. Yeah. But it hadn't been here for a few years. I don't. Does the South Fed and, and Lions, do they have a mobile? Are they a mobile they, crusher? They, when they came to Ellsworth and were soliciting you know, people like me, hey, is that vehicle running? You want to get rid of it? They just towed it away. Yeah. Of course, that's you know they're, they're a half hour from home, but they, right. do, they do crush on the on the spot there in Lyons because they got the stack of you know, metal. <coughs> and of course, they're right by the railroad track, so it's apparently somebody must run a train in there and they just dump the stuff in you know, a gondola off the coast. So you'd have to post these VIN numbers. Two weeks in a row, or yeah, the advertisement. The first thing you have to do is you have to sort of a certified right. Letter. There's a there's a form you fill out that you got to put the VIN number of the year, the make, the model, the color, the owner, and then you mail all those to the last registered owner. That and costs you four wait, bucks right there. Right, and then you got to wait 14 days. If you don't hear anything. Then you advertise for two weeks now. As if, as if the owner that you can't get a hold yeah. of in the other state really somehow curious. got a subscription to a, whatever local newspaper. Exactly. So yeah. it, it's, it's, you know, the it's Kansas statutes go. basically ensure the continued existence of a local newspaper right. because of all the publication requirements. Although I will say this, I liked the bill for our notice of suit and tax foreclosure compared to a couple of things I've seen in other counties. In other words, it's nice that we have, in theory, two competing newspapers. Well, I'll start on that again. Try to get it done. Let's see if, it, see if any of the, the private sector is interested in this. I have no idea what the price of metal is. I'm, you know. I would, I'm in favor of just getting out of the story of business. I mean, if that's up to the Tow companies that collect their fees and reimburse us for the fees. <coughs> well, uh, yeah, I'm sure they're glad that we do it, but yeah. I... So you're saying for us to get out even paying the towing bills? Well, if, <coughs> if we're not housed them, right. <coughs> we don't need to. <laughs> but I mean, that's. Might not have nobody come pick them up either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, all you, can, all you can do is ask. I mean, yeah. worst thing well, I do know. Not interested. You know, I only talk to two. I talk to the Pratt County Sheriff and the Pawnee County Sheriff. And I asked them what, what they, they don't pay any tow bills. They said, well, we're not a towing company. Yeah. I mean, that, but I can see where they. Nobody's going to pay. Right, nobody can get it. Well, either it is. Well, I would say, you know, if they're abandoned, I mean, we're obligated to get them off the road. Right. Our right away is not yeah. US 5281. Right. That's the state's problem. But if it's a wreck. Yeah, I, I have no idea what the market is down here, the number of tows and what the, and what the price of metal is. Um, I know if you have an interstate like Ellsworth does, you'll have five towing services in town, just like they have in Russell. I mean, but more volume of traffic. We don't get a lot of abandoned vehicles, but we get a lot of wrecked ones and a lot of arrests. Because when you get two people who tow out the same town. One out of Stafford or nobody out of Stafford? Nobody out of Stafford anymore. Just the two. I'd say the worst they can say is no, we're not interested. 
uh, obviously point out to them that you know they would get an exclusive contract. I mean, because that's what I'd want if I was one of two. I don't want to take every other one. That's uh, well, right now it's kind of like the, the trash service used to be. I mean, it was an exclusive yeah. contract with the county that's going to pay the bill. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, they got a right to collect whatever they want, and you know, obviously they got a right to exercise their towing company lien on their <clears> vehicle <throat> or, or stuff for it. Well, why don't I go talk to Lawrence and Scott and just see, yeah. see what their feelings are? Because I know most towing services, there's vehicles stored on their mm -hmm. premises. Right. Yeah, I mean, like Pontiac County doesn't even have an impound lot. I didn't ask for them, but I don't think they they have an evidence to deal, but they don't impound wreck vehicles. I'm sure of that. Right. We just threw it all into one lot. I'm thinking of how it filled Ellsworth County. Uses somebody out of Salon. Of course, I would go to that Alabama County policy. I'd consider talking that outfit in lines, too. I mean, if you get a pair of nose here. Right. Because I mean, they were certainly willing to come up to Ellsworth and scout for the cars that didn't work. I had an old Buick where the fuel injection system went out and the price of that versus the book value of the car. Carl Miller is pretty good about giving you an estimate of the car, taking into account the mileage and all that stuff. So when the repairs are twice the value of the car, I know what I do. <laughs> all right, I'll visit with them and come up next week. Yeah. 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 All right, thank you. Thank you. Of course, compounding the problem, this was Saber was one of the ones that had the metallic paint job where the paint started to slow off in year seven, right after the paint warranty wore off. Talk about timing. He had had it now. It wasn't just mine, it was every Buick was Saber of that two or three year run. What year was that? That was my mother's car. I got it when she died, so. I had the the saber that had a lot of paint across his sets. But it was it was metallic. He never became a, a professional golfer back in the day. We're talking the 30s and 40s because he made more money off the side bets, you know. And he was one of these talents who could look like a total doofus out there for three holes and then be like Tiger Woods for the remaining holes. Like in other words, he'd set that hook. Yeah. You know? And he beat he beat Sam Snead, Walter Hagen. And a couple other, you know, big name golfers. And he was uh, in his later years he was like a tutor for Rage Floyd.